Hello and welcome to this video on the A320neo in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Today you join us at the Paris Air Show at Le Bourget Airport where we will be doing a very short flight today showing off some of the really cool features that have been integrated with the A320neo. But first of all, we're going to talk about the history of the Neo. So let's get straight into it. It first flew on the 25th of September 2014. And you might say, what does Neo stand for? Well, it stands for New Engine Option. And that is what made the Neo such a special aircraft. This next generation of engines became available and Airbus integrated it into their already existing A320 airframe. They also added in a few little things like a few tweaks across the whole aircraft, which we're going to take a look at, but the engines are the main focus. So what makes them so special? They're about 15% more fuel efficient. Now you might say, okay, that's, that's good, but that's actually massive because not only do you save that in fuel, you gain that in range because you've got the same size fuel tanks. Even though the engines are physically heavier than the old ones, the aircraft is far more efficient. 50% reduction in emissions, in terms of uh, other emissions than CO2, NOx emissions, and up to 75% less noise, but on average around 50% less, which is huge. You can imagine those are some insane generational leaps, and that's what really makes the Neo so special. Now, because of all of these great attributes, it is now the most popular aircraft ever made, the A320 family, with over 3,300 Neos in service as the time of this video, with thousands more on the order books. So let's move into the simulator now to take a look at some of these details that we've added on the 3D visual model of the A320 Neo. Let's take a look at some of these details that are on the exterior of the 320 Neo. So, Something that's quite cool that you might notice here is there's an avionics inlet and outlet vent. Now, these actually activate depending on temperature, things like this. So at, this, at the moment, you can see that they're open. But if the temperature was to drop below a certain threshold, they will actually close. And if it's very, very hot, they would be open for takeoff. Little details like that. We've also got the outflow valve at the rear is animated and will move if you moving the switch in the flight deck. And also the Trimble horizontal stabilizer also can move all the way up and all the way down. Lots of details like that throughout the whole aircraft. If we're rolling the ground spoilers, you can see inside the wing, so kind of the piping and all this sort of stuff. There's a lot of details in there as well. And of course, the main focus, which is the Neo engines. Okay, so we've already talked about statistically what makes these engines better than the old ones, but let's look at what their design-wise looks like. As you'll first notice, they're a lot bigger than the old engines. They have a much bigger, what we call bypass ratio. So much more air is going around the core of the engine and coming out the back. That's part of the reason why it's so much quieter as well. Also, they have this kind of unique quirk, which is the accessory gearbox, which is the gearbox that runs the fuel pumps and all the other stuff is not mirrored. So what do I mean by that? The left and the right engine are identical to each other for manufacturing reasons. So actually you see that they have a bump on the same side kind of funny but it's always something interesting when you look at the engine also it has a different design of reverse thrust because the engine is so much bigger the older engines used an older style that meant it wouldn't fit and now we have a sleeve type door so it kind of slides all the way back and the reverse thrust is a lot more effective on the neo than it would be on the older engine type Finally, we're going to take a look at these fan blades. They are a work of art. They are composite with metal leading edges, and there's a lot of use of composite carbon fibers in the whole engine, which you can actually see, and that keeps the weight down. And also, kind of a bit of a quirk, on the older engines, when you had uh, the windmilling engines, they used to make a clank noise. No longer happens on the Neo because they're fixed in place. Now let's take a look at the interior of the A320neo. So here you can see in the flight deck, we've put a lot of detail all over the aircraft to try and capture that unique Airbus color. It's kind of a mix of like a gray and a blue. It's always very difficult to try and capture what it looks like because it changes so much with lighting condition. You can also get really close up to these panels without losing any qualities because we've used decals throughout the entire flight deck for all the text. And it just really kind of adds this extra layer of depth onto all the switches and all the buttons and things. It just looks great across the whole flight deck. Also, you can use the sun blinds and the opening window. So the window is a little bit strange on the A320. You have to click the handle, it opens the window, and then you have to 
click the latch to release it to then be able to close it again. Reason for this is if there is a, you need to evacuate and the aircraft's at a nose down attitude, when you open the window, it will stay open and you can get out rather than it sliding closed and trapping you in the window. Let's take a look at the cabin on the A320. Now, this is only available on the A320 Enhanced, which will be available on the PC Marketplace. As you can see in the cabin, we've modeled a standard higher density configuration for the A320neo, as that's what the majority of the operators around the world use. It's got these new modern thin style seats, which are used on the Neo, which saves weight and actually adds a little bit of extra leg room, which is quite nice. And we've got the forward and the aft galley with a lot of little extra details added in, like the decals on the doors and the handles, all this sort of stuff. It's just a great place to sit, look out the window and enjoy the view. Okay, let's jump back into the cockpit and start going over the systems of the A320. All right, let's start with the systems. So one thing you might not have seen before is the fact that, see the engine SD page, this lower SD page, has amber X's as well. Now, if we want to work out how much oil is in the aircraft, we can't. Now, that's actually specific to the Neo, so you have to go all the way to the overhead, and you can see that you've got the fade ground power. Turn it on and then move ourselves back down and we will now see that the lower ECAM actually shows that yep we're good we've got enough oil we're good to go and then we can turn them off you do not leave them on you turn them off before you start the engines so that's just something that you can do okay so it looks like we're good to go for the engine start so we're just going to do it in a standard way so engine mode selector ignition start now the fade deck will power up you can hear the air conditioning kick off I'm going to start engine number one. Now, something that you're going to notice that's different is the EGT, so the exhaust gas temperature of the engine on the left, is actually already a little bit warm. I've done that for a reason. Now, this is to show you a thing called bow rotoring. Now, what is bow rotoring? Well, these next generation engines run a lot hotter and have a lot tighter tolerances than the old engines. So what the aircraft needs to do is it needs to actually spin the engine up for quite a while, around about 50 seconds, to actually cool it down, to spread the heat around evenly before it starts. So see now how it's hit around 30% N2, and it's now just spinning and spinning and spinning the engine, and it will do that. It's Like I say, it's not necessarily to do with the temperature that's drawn on the EGT, it's more to do with spreading that heat out. Now, if you've started the engine within, say, the last six hours, it's probably going to do this. So you can see on the right side, we're ambient temperature, it's going to start normally. So now we're just going to wait until the fuel gets introduced and we'll get the light off. And there we go, we have light off. And can you hear that kind of howl sound? That is what the Neo engines sound like. They might sound familiar to you if you've ever heard a GE90 engine of the 777 starting. Now that's actually because this is based on similar technology, but obviously a next generation and also made a fair bit smaller, but that's why they make the same sort of noise. So now what I'm gonna do is start the second engine and I'll just show you it that it lights off straight away and then we'll be ready to taxi. So when the N2 reaches around 28, 29%, the fuel should start to go in and there we go and you can see it starts straight away okay let's talk about the ground handling changes that came in with sim update 15 now if i release the parking brake and start adding some power aircraft starts to move fairly normal but now if i go full to the left and then full to the right do you see how there's kind of like a delay on the nose wheel it's not instantaneously changing direction anymore so i'm going to do it again full to the left and then full to the right. It feels really natural to me now. So we've taken all these new parameters from Sim Update 15 and integrated them into the A320 as well. Okay, we're on the runway now for our very short flight from Le Bourget to De Gaulle. Now let's talk a little bit about rotation law. What is it and why is it specific to the Neo? So on a normal A320, if I was gonna do a takeoff with a stick, what you'd end up doing is pulling back on the stick pulling a little bit more when the tail enters ground effect and then reducing the pressure again. Now what we do on the Neo is we just pull the stick back and hold it because the stick is no longer just deflecting the elevators, it's actually asking for a rotation rate. So you're asking for the rate and if you keep pulling like you normally would, you're going to ask for too much rate. <laughs> so it will actually go, mm, I think you're going to hit the tail and I'm not going to do it. So basically 
that's what this rotation law is there to try and solve is to try and make the handling on takeoff feel consistent and I can tell you this as a fact the takeoff on a 320 Neo is identical to an A350 so it definitely definitely works so we're ready to go and we're going to do that now and I'm going to leave the stick in view for you so let's uh, release the parking brake and take off so we're going to do a full power takeoff so half scale on the stick 50% N1 roughly there we go wait for the engines to stabilize and all the way Mantog SRS auto thrust is blue checked thrust is set looking good and reducing the stick to neutral by 100 knots and we'll just keep the stick in view there V1 rotate and just hold in that same deflection and it's doing the rest of this it's peeling itself off the ground keeping that nice smooth rotation rate holding it there holding it there we're now letting go of the side stick and now we're in the air so there we go I'm not touching it at all positive climb gear can come up following the flight director to the left okay I just want to talk about the autopilot and how it works so if I select vertical speed and I set say plus 300 do you see how smoothly and slowly the autopilot is responding now that's just like the real thing because it's being limited by a certain amount of g-force per mode for many many other things now I'm going to stick it back into climb and do you see how it's slowly following the flight directors up the thrust is slowly being applied and it's smoothly pitching back up to go back into the climb now that's just like the real aircraft and it took a lot of work to get that sort of real smooth accurate handling so what I'm going to do now as well is I'm going to imagine that we've had our 205 knot speed constraint removed so we're going to go up and I'm going to select speed 250 so I can go speed checked flaps zero now do you see how the aircraft pitches down a little bit now that, that's because it's trying to maintain the energy and it's losing a fair bit of lift from the slats that's all built in and programmed uh, to be just like the real aircraft so we can disarm the spoilers and we can also turn off the lights all of them in fact as well because these do produce a little bit of drag so now we're on our way climbing away now rather than uh, just continue on our little nav track we're going to go straight ahead and we're going to do a little bit of fly-by-wire handling now first of all I just want to have a quick explanation of how Airbus fly-by-wire works I'm not gonna to go too in-depth because I know it can be a complex topic so if I for example disconnect the autopilot now so I've disconnected the autopilot now and I'm gonna open up the flight control page and I'm gonna push the nose down gently and you might need a little bit more force than you're used to because we've simulated uh, the dead band so the simulated sort of the, the middle zone where it's not quite as sensitive so you can see it's it's still holding what I've let it go to, but it's continuing to accelerate because it's at thrust climb. But it's not actually holding the pitch. This is something that people often get confused. It's holding the G-force. Now, how do I prove that? Okay, glad you asked. <laughs> so let me reduce the thrust back. So I've reduced the thrust back. Remember, I've, I've not touched the stick. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move closer up to the PFD. And do you see how the aircraft is slowly but surely pitching up to maintain the G target that it had before? But what's it going to do? Because now the speed is decaying slower and slower and slower and the auto thrust is off. So let's see. Let's see what happens. Because we are going to run into the low speed protections, which are really, really one of the more most complicated aspects of getting this all working. So now the aircraft is going to reach VLS so this is velocity lowest selectable um, but it's going to go straight on through that because we've got uh, we've got no auto thrust in that's where the auto thrust would normally stop it's going to keep going down but you can see it's slowly starting to run out of like the, I remember I haven't touched the stick because it's still trying to pitch up to hold that 
And now what I'm going to do is it's going to just, it's still just on the edge and it's really pitching up quite high now. And soon, yep, there it goes, alpha floor. So full thrust has been applied. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to act like a very silly pilot and I'm going to panic and go, oh my goodness, and I'm going to hold the stick all the way back. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. And now you see we have alpha floor, so full power is applied automatically, idle thrust, and I'm holding the stick back, I'm holding it back, and so look, I still have roll control, left and right, and it's just gonna keep pitching and pitching and pitching until we reach this red band here, which is called the alpha max. So that's just before the stall. So now if I roll to the left, which is definitely not what you should do, see how the aircraft quite aggressively pitches down to maintain that V alpha max. And if I roll to the right, it's gonna do the same thing again, because it's gonna let us pitch up a bit more. Now, if I just let go of the stick, it's gonna nose over to come out of the low speed range. I can turn the auto thrust off, put the thrust back into the climb gate, put the auto thrust back on. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do as well is I can go back into open descent, thrust idle, open descent, and I'm gonna re-engage the autopilot. So you see how it's quite aggressively trying to get back onto the flight director because we're <laughs> it, it, it's basically going ah we're not in a good space here so speed vertical speed let's calm it down a little bit out star and it should be able to cope with this let's just see and i'm then going to turn it back on the heading itself and see how it nicely recovered from that with me engaging the autopilot at a completely inappropriate time disengaging the auto thrust when I shouldn't have done, letting it stall itself and then holding the stick all the way back. And at no time were we in a, well, we were in an elevated danger, I would say, but we weren't in a dangerous position. But that is the Airbus system and Airbus fly-by-wire in progress. And it's all available for you here as well, you know, to, to actually play around with, because it's, 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 it's a fascinating system. Okay, we're all set up in the cruise now, about to start our descent down. And I wanted to talk a little bit about handling uh, landing the Airbus. Now, when we're doing a Config 3 approach, you actually need quite a small flare. You could genuinely get away with flaring at like 20 feet in Config 3. With this weight, yeah, around about that. Small break of the flare, close the thrust levers, and it almost kind of lands itself. So you really don't need a big flare Config 3. Uh, the pitch attitude on the approach is going to be quite a bit higher, around six degrees, has approached about two and a half with uh, config full. And even with config full, the flare, it's, it's not massive in the A320. It, it, it's, it's definitely you need to put in, a, in an input to arrest that rate of descent, but it's not a massive amount. So what I'm going to do is start the descent down now to, there we go. So DES flight level five zero is magenta and it's going to start the descent. So you can see that we've got thrust idle here. It's gonna be inside the speed bracket and it's gonna follow the VNAV path down. Okay, we're a bit later in the approach now. As you can see, uh, it's gonna level off at 5,000 feet, but shortly it's gonna to start to automatically decelerate around here at the magenta D and start to decelerate to meet this 5,000 restriction. Um, and it should see a nice capture of E lock star. Now, what is E lock star? It stands for enhanced lock star. And what it means is the aircraft will automatically turn on to the localizer before the localizer is actually alive. So we'll be able to see here that it doesn't have the localizer signal, but it's still gonna be turning onto the approach. And it does that with the um, track mileage and sort of convergent angle that it's getting from the uh, flight management system. So, and that's all modeled accurately as well. So here we can see coming around the corner, we've been cleared for the approach now, so I'm gonna put approach on, a second autopilot. So we've got GS, Lock Blue, Cat3 Jewel, AP1 and 2. Shortly it's gonna hit this deceleration point. Nicely we're coming back to the belt pump, the speed bracket. And it's coming back now. Out constraint star. And we'll start putting the flaps out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to S speed and then I'm going to leave it to go down the approach at S speed and later on I'm going to select flaps too. It's quite, um, quite a slippery aircraft, the Neo. Not the most slippery, but maybe more than you're used to with a conventional 320. 
because it has Sharklets and the Neo Engines. So see how we've got Lock Star, and the localizer is nowhere near being alive, but it's now turning to get onto the approach, nicely maintaining, and then it's got GS Star as well, so it's captured the glide slope. We can put a missed approach altitude of 5,000 feet in there, and see now how the actual localizer gets blended in with it, and it now smoothly captures the approach. GS. Nice, nice view of uh, Paris now, if I look at the right-hand side of the window. You can actually see the Eiffel Tower just there in the distance. Okay, you can see how we're actually uh, idle thrust going down the approach. Makes sense. I think at around about uh, seven, seven miles, I'll go for flaps two, and then we'll continue to configure from there. But you can see it is pretty slippery. Uh, it, it can go down the glide with, with config one, just about, just about. If we had a bit of a tailwind, we would be increasing the speed now. Okay, Radio Optimus is alive. I'm going to go flaps 2 now. Go speed check, the flaps is 2. You get a fair bit of a balloon and you get a lot more drag with Config 2. So see now how the speed is able to decrease a little bit. And we're aiming for that 180 at 6 miles. So it looks like it's going to be a little fast, so I'm just going to drop the gear. And then I'm going to go Config 3. And I'm going to do that while looking down at the lever. So I also need to arm these and go speed checked, flaps three. Cabin, I'm going to have a little quick look. Ready, and it's armed. Remember, we're aiming for 160 to four. Almost spot on. So it's looking good to me. And I'm going to do this, a bit of a zoomed out for you so you can actually see what I'm doing. Wish me luck. Uh, let's see if I don't actually plant it into the runway. Still at idle thrust. Disconnected one pilot. 1000, nice and stable. So, can you see how if I move the stick around, not too much is happening, same in pitch, but it still does something. Like, see, look, I'm squeezing the stick back just a tiny bit, and there is there is movement. Just a little bit, and there is movement. So I actually do want to now correct, rather than trying to demonstrate how to fly an approach, maybe I should actually fly it properly. Uh, so let's pitch up, there we go. A little bit more. And see the pitch attitude, around six degrees, five and a half, six. That's about correct. Little small corrections to keep you coming down the approach. We're not gonna want, we don't want to fight the fly-by-wire. Because like, for example, look, if I do this, I mean, I'm just fighting myself. 400. Land. 300. Not particularly looking at the puppies now. I'm kind of looking. The aiming point is kind of a little bit kind of close. So I'm kind of going in between the two, if you know what I mean. So the four reds, it's not 100% right because you can see we're pretty much on the glide. Minimum. Aiming for 50, 50 over the threshold. 40. 30. 20, 10, 5. Alright, I'll take that. So, speed brake, spoilers, reverses, uh, we'll leave them for now, it should be fine. And we've got rollout in there, so that is good. I'm going to disconnect the auto brakes now, just to let it roll off. And we'll take this next exit to the left. Getting into the brakes a little heavier now. And you can see how I can kind of nice and accurately turn off with that new ground handling stuff. Reducing the brakes back. A little bit of a hump there in the runway. And we're going to come to a stop shortly after this and clean the aircraft up. Okay, so this is the final part of the video now where we're going to look at some of those final quirks and things that make the Neo different from the CEO. And we're also going to check out some uh, of the effects and animations on the exterior for doors. So one of them is up here, so this is something that I quite like. So you can see that the weather is absolutely awful compared to when we landed. Uh, so I'm going to put the wiper on. Now with the wiper on, you can actually see we've managed to get an effect that smears the rain and makes it look like it's clearing the window so you can actually see through it. And of course you also have the fast setting, slow and then off where it will stow itself back again. Another one is we have this new weather radar unit. Now it's called the Honeywell RDR 4000. Now this is a next generation of weather radar, so it's actually a fixed 
plate underneath and it digitally tilts itself. So there's no tilt control, so it's all digital. So how we control this system in this case is there's independent first officers and captain side control. So if we put this on and select both sides, then the weather will start to show. And if we're taxiing around and we turn through a certain degrees, it will rescan the weather with a scan effect. But we can independently turn off either the first officers or the captains, or we can just turn off the whole system altogether. So quite a neat little system. Another little one that's over here, if you might notice, if you've got very eagle eyes, there used to be an ashtray below the tiller here. Now, the tiller, uh, this was removed in the sort of newer Neos, uh, finally, <laughs> because of uh, regulations no longer state needs to be there, and also probably Airbus can save a little bit of money by not having to manufacture something that no one's used for about 20 years <laughs> in the flight deck, uh, even more from now, actually. So that's all gone now. That's why it's all flush. Another neat little effect is the one on the speed brake here. So it's quite hard to see with the tooltip going over the top, but you can kind of see now how it's animated around the edge. And when I click and I drag the speed brake back, it actually animates around the edge of it. And if I put this back again, you'll see it go like that. Same down here actually with the rudder pedals. It's a bit harder to see, but they actually move along when the pedals move as well. Okay, here you can see the aircraft with all of the main doors open. So even the rear bulk and cargo doors are animated, which is nice, along with the front ground power unit. And as you can see, there's a yellow cable that physically connects itself up to the ground power unit. All of this is toggled via the EFB. Now, inside the cargo areas, we also have the models, and it looks really quite nice. If you are using the base version, so this is currently the enhanced version, you still have all of these opening areas. It's just you don't have the full model cabin on the interior. Okay, well, I could keep talking about this aircraft for hours, possibly even days. <laughs> but uh, we're going to end the video here, and the aircraft is going to be available in Sim Update 15. We hope you really enjoy flying it, and we hope you can see all the work that's gone into making this aircraft. The, the real best it can be, uh, and, and everyone's going to hopefully have a really fantastic experience flying it. So thank you very much for watching the video, and we hope you enjoyed it.